All right. So I was looking through for some news today and everybody's talking about Trump's tariffs. And I wanted to read this article and at the same time stand here and break down the reasons why everybody's wrong about tariffs. All right. And they're like, because this, this, this isn't something that is a long-term ideology. So let's, let's get into this real quick. We're going to read over this article some, and then we're going to break down a whole bunch of shit so that we understand where we are, where we started and where we are going to end up at. All right. And where, where Trump's trying to get us to is kind of the situation. So markets. Stocks are telling Trump he made a big mistake. This is from uh, Bloomberg Opinion. The time in the announcement of the new tariffs on Chinese goods is hard to explain unless the Fed was a factor. It's by John Auth. It's from yesterday. All right. To cut rates, first raise tariffs. Tell people what to do in order to get what they want, and they will probably do it. That appears to be a key takeaway after two days of market drama. On Wednesday, the Federal Reserve Chairman Jer Jerome Powell made clear that the central bank's reaction function was changing. Rather than looking at the labor market, the main reason it cut interest rates by a quarter of a percentage point was the implications of global developments for the economic outlook. <sighs> it's corporate speak for and things are slowing down. <laughs> Further questioning made clear that he was talking about the trade situation, the risk of a worsening conflict. Meanwhile, President Donald Trump tweeted that he had disappointed that the Fed had not been more aggressive. On Thursday, came the news in another presidential tweet that there will be a 10% tariff on $300 billion worth of Chinese imports to the U.S. as of September 1st. The market's reaction was dramatic. Stocks and commodities, particularly oil, tumbled on the negative implications for economic growth. And the cash and U.S. Treasury markets signaled their greatest certainty yet that the Fed will be lowering rates again next month. So... Let's talk about this, right? And you can see the fucking you know, crude's up like a fucking a dollar seventy one a fucking barrel and shit. Like I don't know why the fuck they're being retarded. But anyway, um, so the reality is this, all right? No matter what we do right now, there's gonna be an economic slowdown. No matter what happens, like there's no fucking choice. Just demographic wise, there's gonna be an ep epidemic. Uh, there's gonna be a fucking economic slowdown. Because there's less people in China, there's more old people all over the world than there are young people. Doesn't matter whether you're in Asia, doesn't matter whether you're in fucking Central America, doesn't matter whether you're in South America, doesn't matter whether you're in North America, doesn't matter whether you're in Europe, and even in the Middle East, all right? So, it's the problem of there's way too many people on the wagon and not enough people pulling it. And the individuals who were driving the original market forces that were driving the market up are now retiring and not spending as much money. All right. There was actually an article out uh, yesterday about the fact that they're closing down flagship uh, retail spots in larger economic places like um, New York, San Francisco and L.A. Like these big places like Macy's and um, not Macy's uh, shit, Saks Fifth Avenue and shit of this nature that they're closing down their big retail spaces because of the fact that. All these sex in the city individuals are now older and are not able to spend as much money because once they hit retirement, they knew that they were on a downward trajectory as far as spending is concerned. And they have not as much money to put, you know, I mean, into buying clothes and high end shit of this nature. This is just a fact of life. Like there nobody has enough money to fucking retire on. And people are beginning to notice that. Like it once you retire, you'll notice like there's not enough money there. And you have to end up cutting down your expectations of how much money it's going to cost you to survive. And then you have increasing cost of, you know, I mean, prescription medications, you know, just basic shit for you to be able to get by and survive. So you end up spending less in the market. So when the Fed's reaction function is led by measures of inflation and employment, neither of which the president can control, even if policies can affect them. <clears throat> then there is little Trump can do to force a central bank hand. But when the Fed's driven by global developments over trade, then he can very directly engineer a cut in rates by threatening new tariff on key trading partners. Is Trump really that cynical? We cannot know. But the timing of the announcement when the official word was that talks with China were proceeding well is hard to explain unless the Fed was a factor. And we now discover that the Fed is left haplessly in the role played by the European Central Bank during the sovereign debt crisis. Earlier this decade, or the Bank of England in Brexit and in Broglio, 
and that it had no choice but to offer insurance in the case that the politicians do something really stupid that severely damages the economy. Central banks in this way become direct purveyors of moral hazard, and there's nothing they can do about it. So here's, here's the thing, okay? What they're trying to say is that what Trump's doing is stupid, but the reality is this. China has a massive market, okay? It's one of our largest trading partners, and we want to be able to sell to that market, but the problem is, is all of our goods that go in there get tariffed, all right? So we are basically locked out of that fucking market, and we want to be able to have the individuals here in the working class not and we don't want to have to end up going to UBI and going in debt and hyperinflation in order to pay for being able to have these individuals continue to survive. So we know that we can make goods that we can sell over there. All right. That way we can have exports, you know, which brings money into the country. That's how fucking that's how wealth is created. And I mean, you take something out of the ground and you create something out of it and then you fucking ship it out or you sell it to somebody else and then you make money. That's how wealth is created. That's that's a basic premise of how shit operates. And China understands this all too well. And they have a president for life. So that means they can have a long term plan when it comes to government. The issue is, is that our government is, you know, I mean, changed over every four to eight years. And on top of that, we have these cocksuckers out of the fucking stock exchange who go, who are extremely worried about their bottom dollar in their fucking, their next quarter, all right, their next three months. So, yes, we can move quickly, but the issue is, is that we're always being driven by these retards immediate needs and not the needs 15 years down the fucking road because we're going to have a problem where the global population is going to spike here in the next like 20 years right it's going to spike and then we're going to have a massive downward decline and within the next 15 to 20 years we're going to end up having more people over the age of 80 than we do over the age you know i mean than we do under the age of 80 and that's a major problem that we need to look at but we can't stand here and have a conversation about tomorrow because these retards keep worrying about fucking this goddamn moment right now now this is different than i mean see the problem with this is like yo look i understand that you know you had the same conversation about like climate change or something like that you know from a leftist perspective if that's you know i mean if that's what they want to do but the issue is with climate change is that you're starving people right now right and that's not cool either. These individuals here aren't going to starve, all right? They're fucking Wall Street motherfuckers. Like, they are they will be okay, <laughs> right? Like, yo, and I get the fact that, you know what I mean, dragging down the market a little bit right now will end up hurting people's 401ks and retirements and things of this nature. I understand all this, but this should have been dealt with 20 fucking years ago. Right, like when Bill Clinton stood here and opened up all this shit to uh, fucking China and whatnot, and all this trade, and Nixon and Ford and fucking Reagan and Bush and Bush and you know, like all this bullshit. When all this was going on, like this should have been addressed long ago. But the problem is, is that they didn't want to have that conversation because these American firms were making all this fucking money going to goddamn China. And I understand, like, yo, this is this is something we're going to bring up, you know, fucking on the, on the video. If I have to do it myself, I'll fucking do it. I don't care. It'd be what it is. And it's important to have these conversations. It's important that we have an honest and open conversation, and not just these cocksuckers standing here putting out their ridiculous nonsense because nobody's sitting down on a six o'clock news anymore and going, hey, look, man, let's, let's talk about this. You know, because it's important that we go, we need to have a conversation about the next 20 years rather than the next fucking three, three months. You know what I mean? Legitimately, it is. So the market reaction also suggested something very strange about the latest escalation in trade tensions. Trade had all steadily become less salient over the last few months. Investors thought they had their arms around the problem. But the latest tweet had a dramatic and galvanizing effect. Arguably, the most variable impact came in the bond market, where the year in the bench arc 10-year bond, no, <clears throat> 10-year U.S. Treasury note, dropped to its lowest since Trump was elected in 2016. See, like, yo, that's two years. Like, it's legitimately not that fucking bad. Actually, it's about to be three, right? This was quite a reversal. Well, you know... I'll be honest with you, the bond market's been going down. And if you notice, like, yo, it's been going down since the beginning or the end of 2018. 
Like you see the fucking downward moving shit. Like this, <clears throat> this isn't a like a, a crazy reversal. Like you see, you go up, go down, go up, go down, go up, go down, go up, go down. Like this is just, this is how this operates sometimes. You know, what I mean, people don't want to hold on to our bonds on a regular basis. This is quite a reversal. Meanwhile, the news amplified the trend towards a flatter, even more even yield curve, uh, inverted yield curve, which is generally regarded as a recession indicator. Or at least the indicator the Fed will soon become obliged to cut this rate. What happened to the gap between the three-month and ten-year yields, which has been flashing warning signs for months? Yes, it has. All right, and people have been talking about it and talking about it and talking about it. I don't fucking care. All right, like yo, it's been doing this for the past fucking ten years, not past few months, past ten years. If you go back through all the fucking records and shit, like yo, why is it that like man, let, yo, people be using information on their own bullshit and they'd be like. It's been doing this for the past few months. No, it's been doing this since like 2012, all right? Like, you can calm the fuck down. Like, yo, such moves are plainly driven in part by the negative implications of higher tariffs on economic growth. This isn't a long-term thing. And this is the bitch, is that like, yo, we can't be having a conversation about three months and fucking 15 years at the same goddamn time. You need to shut the fuck up and take this fucking beating for a minute. All right, because you've been making fucking money hand over fist for the past 20 or 30 fucking years while the rest of us have been starving. It's time for the rest of us to have a goddamn job again, too. You can make money. We can make money at the same fucking time. We need to get these goddamn tariffs dropped in these other fucking countries. That's the reality of it. By December, the meeting, the odds of at least two more rate cuts from here rose to 42 to 75 percent. Whether this is not Trump's intention, the president transformed perceptions about a likely response for the Fed. Is this the work of a stable genius? The argument in favor would hold that Trump now gets interest rates to stimulate the economy through the elections in 2020 while also beefing up his evidently genuine desire to take the trade fight to China. Against this, there's an argument that if he really pushes ahead with higher tariffs, the result will be lower equally, equilibrium <clears throat> rates needed to keep the economy growing. Lower rates will not, in fact, stimulate economic activity. And there's also a matter that the stock markets did not respond to the good news of likely lower rates in the future, but the shocking bad news that the risk of an all-out trade war had greatly increased. Trump takes the stock market seriously, and he seems to be telling him it's making a mistake. And then there is the issue of how China responds. The Chinese economic remains far, by far the greatest risk to the world economy. And this news can only increase the reasons for concern. And when it comes to retaliation, there is always a currency market. At the years of intervening to keep its currency from strengthening too fast, China has recently been intervening to keep it from weakening too fast. Many care about the level of 7 yuan to the dollar. Breach this and it appear that China is prepared to let its currency depreciate drastically. In response to Trump's trade moves and judging by moves in the offshore market after the tariff announcement, the critical level is once again in play. <sighs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. And see, like, yo, look, see, it's never measured long term. It's never like, you know, what, what was it at over the past 10 years? It's always like these fucking like maybe one year, three month fucking periods and shit. So this is a cunning gambit by the president rather than considered response by the latest Chinese gambit in trade negotiations. It is a reckless and dangerous one indeed, but is what is most important, which seems to suggest it's largely prompted by the Fed, that it comes just as markets had seemed to lose their fears about trade. Early this week, Gavin, uh, Gavical research Arthur Krober said that the macro risk in trade talks was much, was much diminished and that he had become a sideshow to the far more important issue of fundamental reset in U.S.-China relations. In quoting the following passage, not to laugh at the way that it appears to have been proved wrong, but to show that it made great eminent sense. It may seem bold to, to claim that macro risk from the trade war has evaporated. Yet the key outcome from June's G20 meeting was that President Donald Trump backed down from his threat to impose 25% tariffs on an additional U.S. 50 billion or so U.S. imports in China. He did so even though China made no substantive new concessions to avoid tariffs and get the talk started. The main reason for Trump's climb down is that all these new tariffs and resulting retaliation from China would have damaged market confidence in the U.S. economy. This will be equally true in the future that another ma round of major tariffs <clears throat> would hurt U.S. market sentiment in the economy. And so Trump, above all, needs a strong economy during his 2020 re-election campaign. The likelihood of big new tariffs over the next 18 months is low. And any tariff threats from Trump that during that period will quickly be judged by China and the markets is empty. I'm done reading that bullshit. All right, all this seems to make sense, and it evidently also made sense to markets that had to settle back into a risk-on groove and appeared far less worried about tr trade talk. My best guess to explain the sudden escalation from Trump is he was presented with a new and very appealing reason to raise shares. That is the way he could force the Fed to cut rates, and now he will find out the consequences. <sighs> well, 
you know, that's the reality is, is that he wants these individuals to move quicker. All right. And China doesn't want to move quicker because it has to fund its socialist government. China knows it is damn near on the brink of a fucking revolution. And us continuing to move tariffs up pushes that fucking revolution further into the motherfucking, into the purview of the fucking Chinese government. They know the deal, all right? And they have a massive population to fucking take care of. They have a giant public works project to take care of. And they're hemorrhaging fucking money at the moment. So, the reality is, is that China needs to have a conversation with the U.S. and go, all right, fine, we'll let you in the fucking market. And once they do that, the whole situation changes and capitalism becomes actual fucking capitalism and free market capitalism rather than these protectionist stances that China is trying to take long term. And this is more important than almost anything else we're doing with our government right now. Legitimately, this is probably one of the most important things for all of America because you end up having individuals have jobs. And not just any jobs, manufacturing export jobs, which means that you can sit here and work long term and be able to have another market other than your own to sell shit into. This is how you build a middle class. This is how you bring our cities back to fruition, how you bring our families back to fruition. This is how you rebuild our economy. From being the banking bullshit that it is right now into an actual fucking economy where human beings can exist. Godspeed, Mr. Trump. I hope it works out. Tom Pease and Pete Noy Deuce. Later.